All right, so this is EE2060 lab week two. So this is just a lecture on DC circuits, okay? So I, I'm not going to go like the all three hours continuously. We'll take breaks and we'll, when we finish, we'll finish, right? So you all got the new syllabus, the homework, etc., right? So any questions on that? How we're going to go? So if you noticed, your next exam is going to be a, actually another review for you of DC circuits. So again, if you know DC circuits pretty well, your uh, 2060, even 2070 is very easy. Okay. Actually, your entire um, circuit sequence, electronics, is pretty easy. But you need to know 2050 really well. All right, so today, recall where we stopped. So we stopped at, uh, basically, we did resistors. Okay, KCL, KVL. So today, let's start with um, independent voltage and current sources. So what that means is, let's look at uh, voltage source. So an independent voltage source establishes a fixed voltage across the terminals. Okay. This could be, uh, so here's terminal AB. So irrespective of the current flowing through it. So as an example, let's say V of T is constant, 5 volts. So if you plot this on the IV plot, you'll get something like this, 5. So this is in volts, and this is in amps, OK? So it doesn't, so what is the difference between positive current? So what is I, which I have not specified here, which is bad. There is I, for example. Or actually, uh, hold on. Let's stick to the passive sign convention. Let's draw an I. So, so there is A, and let's say that's I. Okay. So positive current means the device is absorbing power. We'll shortly uh, look at power. And negative current means the device is releasing power. So that's, this is an example of a DC constant voltage source, okay? It doesn't have to be constant. But now current sources are uh, interesting in the sense, suppose I do this. Okay, let's do this as I, okay? And then in this case, let's just do plus or minus V like this. So here is AB. So let's say I tell you, and this can be I of T, of course, function of time. So I of T, let's say, is constant 2 amps, for example. But let me ask you this question. Is this a valid circuit? Why not? Why isn't it valid? It's not a valid circuit. What's wrong with it? So what's wrong if it's open? I mean, here it's valid, right? Huh? Yes, there will be no current if this is open. This circuit, as it is, violates KCL. Correct? Two amps is coming out. Where does it go? So nowhere. So this is incorrect. So in a sense, if you ever find current sources, they'll be connected to some load. Okay? So have you ever seen current sources? Is your battery a current source? The one you get from, like, say, if you know, it's a voltage source, right? So there are, they do exist current sources. They're usually at the transistor level. Okay? And you can make current sources out of uh, field effect transistors. That's how they're usually made. But anyway, so just an aside about current sources. So here is I in amps, V in volts. And this guy, right now, the way I have it is 2 amps. Okay? So that's the IV. And of course, what you have here is an uh, independent voltage source. It does have a constant current mode operation. Okay? But uh, you can move this down. There's a thing in the middle. Down there. Okay. So the next one is the idea of power. Okay. So let's say we have a two-terminal device for now. Okay. I, A, B, plus or minus V. Okay. 
So this is a two terminal device. Oops, can't write two terminal device. So it has a pair of terminals, okay, or a single port. That's what they call it. Now we can use the the cool thing about power. This is a very elegant expression for power in terms of voltage and current. Uh, you probably derived it in 2050, yes? So if you're not, let's do it right now. So what's the physics definition of power? Power is the rate of doing work, yes? What are the dimensions of power? What are the units, dimensions? Watts, okay. Uh, what about work? What are the units of work? Joules, and then T is second, okay? But what we can do, this is using the chain rule, uh, no drinking in here. Yeah, so I didn't go over the lab, lab rules this week because it's lab lec it's lecture. I'll go over it next week. So yeah, just keep it away. Because if you spill, it's a problem. Right? That's why. DW, DQ times DQ, DT. So this is using chain rule from calculus. But the cool thing is, well, it's not cool in the sense it's there's just a definition of dw dq another definition of voltage and dq dt is i so this definition of voltage we didn't discuss yesterday but it's intuitively obvious that this is voltage because this tells you how much work i need to do to move charge okay so joule per coulomb is another definition of voltage so here power is v times i but again we need to look at the passive sign convention. And there is no difference between the sign convention for power and the sign convention we looked at yesterday for V for voltage and current in the sense that this implies P equals plus VI. Is that clear? Because again, current is considered to be carried by positive charges. As positive charges go from high potential to lower potential, they're going to lose energy and the lost energy is going to go into this device. Yes? So here is um, uh, P equals VI, right? So here is an, let's look at an example. So let's say I have this circuit. Actually, let's go to the next page. So let's say this is 5 volts, 2 milliamps, and then 7 volts, okay? So if I say, I uh, check if power balance is satisfied, this is actually in your homework, I think it's one of the problems, in homework 2. Okay. So power balance means the sum of the power absorbed should be equal to the sum of the power dissipated, okay, if the circuit's valid. But usually, I don't, I don't, people don't say power absorbed or power released, they say power associated with the device. So let's find the power associated with the 5 volt device, let's find the power associated with the 2 milliamp current source, and the power associated with the 7 volt voltage source, okay? So to find power, you need two variables, voltage and current. Of course, if you have a linear resistor, you can say V equals IR and power equals I squared R or I equals V over R, power is V squared over R. But it's enough if you, I mean, you should definitely know this. Okay, power is VI with the appropriate sign. So let's check. So what's the power associated with the 5 volt source with the correct sign and the correct units? Almost. So let's look at this. So one answer was 10 milliwatts. Anything missing here? So let's see how the current is flowing in this branch. So the current is 2 milliamp like this, yes? So current is leaving the positive end of the voltage drop. So what is the correct answer? Negative. So let me put that in red. It's very important. Okay. Negative 10 milliwatts. Is that clear? Now, what about the power associated with the 2 milliamp source? So you need to find the voltage drop across it, yes? So I'll pick a direction. Say I pick this. Let's call this V2. So KVL says 
uh, let's say I go around the loop like this, I use the physics way, like I told you in yesterday's lecture. So I go up by 5, I drop by V2, I drop by 7 to give 0, correct? And V2 is going to be negative 2 volts. And you can kind of see that, that V2 is going to be negative. There's nothing wrong with negative numbers, right? You can see it's going to be negative because this end has the higher voltage, yes? So now, what's the power associated with the 2 milliamp source? Uh, let's just do it in two steps. In the sense, it's VI. It's just because uh, it's always good to do it in step by step so you don't get messed up with the signs. What about the sign? Is it positive or negative for VI? Looking at this picture. Positive, positive right? Because current enters the positive direction of the voltage drop we assigned. Any questions on that? All right. So, plus, but this is actually V2. And then this is negative 2 volts, okay, times 1 milliamp, which is negative 2 milliwatts. Is that clear? The negative sign comes from KVL, not from the passive sign convention. Oh, it's 2 milliamps, okay. Yeah, thank you. I don't know where I got one from. So people were staring at me. So it's negative 4, okay. Now, let's check the power associated with the 7-volt source. So what is that? It's uh, So it's plus VI because the 2 milliamp comes in here, enters the positive direction of voltage drop. So it's plus, what is V is 7 volts times... 2 milliamp. I'm putting the milliamp in so you don't forget it's milli. Right? This is plus 14 milliwatts. So what's the sum of the powers? What is it? Zero watts. So that's good. All right. So power balance is satisfied. It's a valid circuit. Okay. Okay. Any questions on this? Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to look at elements in series and parallel. So this was power. The third one is elements in series and parallel. So before that, we have to look at what a node is. So a node in a circuit, like was mentioned yesterday, is a point in a circuit. A node is a point where two or more, so if it's three or more, that's something called as an essential node. There are other terms for this, but I'm just going to use node, okay? A node is a point where two or more circuit elements connect. That's it, okay? And then another thing we need is loop. A loop is a sequence of nodes such that our starting node is the same as the is equal to the ending node without, I mean, it's the intuitive definition that you will, that you think it is, what a loop is. But then as you will see, it might be a little tricky, but you can understand like how to deal with this through practice. So anyway, without going through any intermediate node more than once. Not note node. Then once. Yeah. All right. So that's a node and a loop. So the, now we are ready for elements in series have the same current flowing through them. That's the definition. And you will see why we use this definition shortly, because it helps us simplify circuits. Elements in parallel, so this is the symbol for parallel, the math symbol, a pair of vertical lines to the superscript LEL, okay, parallel, have the same voltage across them, or they're connected, or... Uh, elements in parallel 
or connected across a common pair of nodes. It's another definition which people use. Okay? So these two definitions are help us simplify circuits. So let's look at a few examples. Okay, so we'll look at, uh, so here is another example. So let's say I have 3.5 volts and negative 2.5 volts, okay? VAB, so let's say I ask you, so VAB, oh, by the way, VAB means uh, the plus end of the voltage drop is at A, the minus end of voltage drop is at B. It's just a definition. Okay. So somebody asks you, what's the Thevenin equivalent at AB? That means uh, the plus end of the open circuit voltage is at A, the minus end is at B. Okay. And we'll look at it a short while, in a little while, but anyway. So find value of VAB. Okay. So the solution is, well, we apply KVL. Journal writer. Okay, so KVL says what? So let's say I go around the loop like this. So this is a loop, right? I start at B, I go to A, right? Okay, if you want, let's call this C. So B, A, C, B, yes. And notice loops include open circuits. Right? There's nothing uh, magical about open circuits. The only thing is, open circuits are guaranteed to have zero current through them, just like short circuits are guaranteed to have zero voltage across them. So always say voltage across and current through, okay? It's not current across and voltage through, that's not, that's not how it integrally works. All right, so tell me what KVL is. So I start here and go around. So anybody, what's KVL expression? No, tell me the expression for it, maybe. No, 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 go like this, go like this, yeah, so VAB, that's right, and then what happens here? Minus 2.5, minus negative 2.5. All right, so let's see, so you go up by, uh, you go up, you drop, okay, and then what happens? So is this right? What's wrong with it? Huh? Where is the plus? Okay. Okay. So this has to be a plus. All right. So this it's good that we are making these mistakes. This is an example of a sign error. So just be careful. Right. So you go up by VAB. You drop by 3.5. You go up by in this case negative 2.5, and then VAB is 3.5. So then what? So it's minus 3.5 minus 2.5. So in other words, it's 3.5 plus 2.5, right? How much is that? Six volts. Just be careful of the sign, right? I mean, it might seem trivial here, but you will, later you will see circuits where the sign is not, it's not very obvious, okay? That's why in these circuits you iron it out. So just like you can combine voltage sources in series, you can, the, so current sources are dual voltage sources, okay? So you can combine current sources in parallel. Of course, if you have two voltage sources in parallel, ideally they better be equal to each other, okay? Practically, let's say you're charging your car battery, or in that case you have a resistance between the two batteries, so the current will flow from uh, the battery that is charged to the battery that is discharged, but ideally, if you have two voltage sources in parallel, they better be equal to each other. So what about this guy? So let's say I have a little resistor here, know, 2K, and this is, Two milliamps. So this is, uh, for some reason, people find this more straightforward. I and mean, this is also pretty straightforward. You just got to be careful. So if I ask you find value of I1, so the solution will be very quickly. So you can do KCL, but look at this. Five milliamp comes in. Okay. So I1 by case two milliamps goes out. I1 is three milliamps by KCL. Three milliamps going out or negative three milliamps coming in. Now, what you can, this series and parallel, understand is not related to voltage sources, current sources. I'm sure you have seen it for resistors. 
so let's say I have n resistors, and you will see in this course it's also valid for capacitors and inductors because elements in series have the same current flowing through them, right? So here is V1, here is V2, here is V, oh, this should be V3, V3 dot dot dot, here is Vn, therefore, uh, so this is resistors in series, that's the example. Uh, resistors in series. So you have V is equal to V1 plus V2 plus dot dot dot. If you want to derive an expression for this, plus Vn, this is by KVL. So this is going to be, and the usual notation for this is looking in what is the equivalent resistance, okay? That's given by I times an REQ, but then the individual V1 here is IR1 plus IR2. Notice how all the currents are the same because the resistors are in series, or the elements are in series. So in other words, REQ is sigma k going from 1 to n of R sub k. Okay. So resistors in series add. Here is another example that is resistors in parallel. So R1, R2, dot, 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 Rn. So here is I, here is V, but then it's the same voltage across them. However, the current is going to be different, and then you can use KCL to derive this expression. I'm sure you've seen this in 2050. Resistors in parallel, it's 1 over REQ is sigma K going from 1 to N of 1 over RK. Yes? So you have seen these, right? Okay? All right, so let's do another one. Suppose I give you this. I plus or minus V, okay, here is nonlinear resistor in parallel with a 1K, all right? So let's call this I1 V1, okay? Well, oh, fine, we will leave it as V1, I2 V2. So suppose I tell you that the nonlinear resistors IV, okay, looks like this. So between negative one and one, this is in volt, this is in milliamp, okay? It's one and negative one, okay? However, after that, okay, I mean, oh man. I heard somebody say the S word. I don't know why. It's not, it's not that difficult if you understand this definition. Huh? Sorry? No, the, the, okay. You, see, look, the point is you learned this, right? So that's all it is. That is, this series and the point of this example is series and parallel are not, really, are not, are not restricted to voltage source, current source, resistors. They're true for any elements. And the reason why I do this example is because when you do like transistor circuits, you're gonna see this. Okay. Which equation? Oh, that one, that's nodal analysis. So the question was asked, uh, and so I'll cover that next, okay? So that's on my list. Uh, so yeah. I was gonna do dependent sources. So let me do this, let's do this example. Then uh, the next, then I'm going to do voltage divider, current divider, right? You might have already seen that, but I want to review it. And then we'll do nodal analysis. Okay. The point of that question was, the last question on your exam, is nodal analysis is very general. It's the only general method, right? It's the only method that always works uh, because mesh analysis doesn't always work, right? And Tevin and Norton superposition source transforms are not circuit analysis techniques. They're what is called circuit simplification techniques. They definitely don't always work. So anyway, let's, um, uh, let's see. Ah, the way I've drawn this, this is going to be 1.5 mil, right? And 
This is the problem with the tablet. It's really hard to draw. So just, uh, it's not drawn to scale, obviously. Basically, I want to make these two slopes equal. There, negative 0.5, negative 2, okay? Okay, so the question is, what is the IV of the equivalent IV of the two elements above and it's a good point which was raised that you have not seen this before but again the point is you should train yourself so you know what the definition of series parallel is okay so you should be able to use that and find this find out what the equivalent is and the reason why you want to do this in 2050 because 2050 it's it's much easier than like it's like let's say electromagnetism all right, all right so how do you do this so first of all, are these two elements in series or parallel? They're in parallel. Okay, why? Note that NR, that nonlinear resistor, and 1K are in parallel. Why? Because they have the same voltage across them or they're connected across a common pair of nodes. All right, so now what do you do? How do you solve this? So what do you do? Mm -hmm. Any ideas, how do you do this? Okay, so that's right, the voltage over the 1K is the same as this voltage. But how do I combine these two in parallel? What do I do? There are two ways to do this, right? One is graphical, the other is algebraic. So let's say, hint, okay, so let's... No, that's a good point. You can't do R1 times R2. That formula is only valid when you have linear resistors. This is not linear. And trust me, you will see this. Eventually, and in so let me let's do I two V two. There's an IV for the one K as well, right? Oh. Here is it in milliamps. Here it is in volts. Okay, so when it's one negative one, this is one milliamp. This is negative one milliamp. Yes, and this is supposed to be a straight line. So visually, it's a straight line. Okay. So how do I so given these two pictures, can I use this fact that they're in parallel and just graphically add them? You understand what I'm saying? No? So you pick a common voltage, yes? And then you add the currents. Right, that's what it means for two elements to be in parallel. So let's say I have two volts in here, yes? The current flowing through this device is 1.5 milliamps, yes? So if there is two volts across these terminals, it means there's two volts here, right? There's two milliamps flowing through here. Add the currents. So, because this is not, this is like math. So, let's see, it's not circuits. It's got nothing to do with circuits. So, let me try it this way. Another way. Right. So, no, there are, let me do this algebraic way. Two ways, ah, I can't spell, to solve this problem, okay? So, one way is, so step one, Okay, let me just do it the graphical way. I'll get back to the algebraic way later. Uh, graphically, uh, later, I'll do algebraically. Okay, once you get the hang of this. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, graphically, you pick a common voltage, okay? Because the voltage 
across these two elements has to be the same. They are in parallel. Is that clear? For that, you correspondingly find the current, right? So let's say you pick 0.5 volts, half a volt, okay? This guy is going to give half a milliamps. Can you see that from this graph? Yes? So it's 0.5 volts across this device. Half a milliamp has to flow here. Is that clear? That's what this graph tells you. Okay. There are two ways to specify how certain elements behave. One is the IV graph. Okay. The other is the actual math relationship. So for this element, this is the algebraic one. So I or V2 is I2 times 1K. Yes? V equals IR. Yes? But for this guy, to write I1 as a function of V1, it has to be written in pieces. Okay, you have to say between negative 1 and 1, it's this. But for greater than 1, if this is the equation, for less than negative 1, that's the equation. Okay, that's how you describe this guy. And then you can add them. That's actually algebraic. But I'll cover this later. Graphically, the same idea is, okay, let me pick uh, one voltage value because the voltage across them has to be the same. 0.5 volts. There's 0.5 milliamps flowing through this guy. There is also 0.5 milliamps flowing through this guy. Yes? So the net current is 1 milliamp. Make sense? So graphically, what I do is IV and then it crashed. So you can crash. Oh. What I hear about my tablet. Often. So, you have, um, all right, what I'll do is, it's, um, let me do this. Let's take like a couple of minutes break and let's get back because I want you to think about this. Uh, yeah, open the last note, okay, fine. So, let me pause this and think about it, discuss it with your neighbors. We'll take like, uh, because the lab is three hours long, like I said, I'm not gonna lecture for all three hours. So I'll pause this and we'll get back, okay? So take a couple of minutes. All right, getting back to this. So there are a couple of questions raised. One was a bureaucratic one. For the homework due tomorrow, you can just turn it in as a hard copy. That's what I expected. If you have access to a scanner, you can scan it and upload it on Connect, all right? But turn it into me, but turning into me as a hard copy is fine. Point number one. Point number two. The, so you. So the the point was raised that you have not seen this before in 2050. However, my point is, this is not something new. You should not think about. It's a very bad way to think about that. I have not seen this before. Yes, you have point is these elements are in parallel. It's just the way the question is worded is different. So this is what is called, you've heard of the words critical thinking? Yes. This is what critical thinking is. Okay, so and you have to do this as engineers. And it's better if you learn this sooner than later. Okay. So if you don't want to do this, then it's not good, okay. So, let's continue where we left off. That is, pick a common, pick a voltage, right? put one voltage in. Like I said, well, if it's zero volts, the good news is if it's zero volts in, both devices have zero current flowing through them, okay? Number one. Number two, if you notice, these are straight lines, yes? How many points do I need to plot a straight line? Two. So I just need, well, there is a break with this guy. So I'm going to pick two points here, okay? And then actually, this point is both on uh, this these curves and this straight line. So I'm just going to pick this point, this point, this point, and just graphically add them. That's my equivalent IV. Is that clear? All right, so here we go. All right, so zero, zero, zero. So if it's one volt, in here, both devices allow one milliamp, yes? So what's this point? So if it's one volt, what's the value here? So this is one milliamp, this is one milliamp, what's I?
2 milliamps, right? So this is 2. Same thing here. Negative 2. Okay. So the slope actually increases. Yes? Is that clear? Yes? Let's look at this guy. So if it's 2 volts in here, there's 2 volts across both of them, right? This fellow permits 1.5 milliamps, correct? What is the current through this guy? I mean, you can just tell me if it's 2 volts across, it's a 1K resistor, how much current is flowing? So if it's 2 volts here, across 1K, what is I2? 2 milliamp, right? So it's 2 milliamp plus 1.5 milliamps, 3.5 milliamps, yes? So this is, and it's symmetrical. Draw this nicely. No. Again. So it's supposed to be piecewise linear. There it is. Okay. And if you really want to understand this, take a piece of graph paper and do this. Okay. Negative 1, negative 2. This is also negative 3.5. I mean, it's symmetrical. perfect world, you can see the piecewise linearity. So you, have you all used MATLAB before? Have you used MATLAB? No. I could do this in some of you have. So um, to, 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 so anyway, I'll get back to this later. So let's now get into dependent sources because I want to finish this before I address nodal analysis. Okay. Dependent sources. So there are four kinds of dependent sources. We need them or we use them, we don't need them, we use them to model amplifiers. And this is later, okay? Not in 2070 also. You'll whatever the electronic course is, 3111, that's where you will see these dependent sources. Okay. You probably also saw it in 2050 if you did a non-ideal model of an op amp. Did you do the non-ideal model of an op amp? Some of you, okay, I'll cover it, but you'll, you'll see it in there. Uh, you know how we can build dependent sources? How do you build them? So we can build them using op amps, and we'll see how later. See how later, next week actually. What are the four kinds of dependent sources? So, number one is what is called as a voltage controlled voltage source. There's no particular order, right? So here is the symbol for this. This is just so annoying. Thing crashing. Freaking Windows. It is Windows. It's a Windows problem. So it's a rhombus plus minus, okay? So the voltage across these terminals AB, so VAB is given by some alpha times V in, okay? So this V in is somewhere else in the circuit. The way this dependent source is, works is it magically, well not magically, like, as you will see, we can build this using op amps, looks at V in and says VAB is alpha V in, okay? So that's one. So it's a voltage controlled voltage source. The second time, second type could be voltage controlled current source. So, it's a source of current, so it's I beta, if you will, is beta times some other VC, but of course, you can't leave a current source open, so this is connected to something, right? That's the second kind. Then there is a third one, voltage, so then there is current controlled voltage source, okay? So it's a voltage source. So here it is, plus minus. Let's call this V gamma, all right? So here is AB, alpha, beta, gamma, times some current, ID, okay? And finally, there is current controlled, but it's a current source. So here is that. So let's call this I delta. It's some delta times IM. There it is. Okay. So, and we'll see how to build these later. But now let's 
Mm, let's see. Da -da. Mm, voltage divider, current divider. Uh, we'll look at that later. Dependent source is okay. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at techniques of circuit analysis. Uh, actually, let's see. Before we do this, let's do this. Let's go through all your exam problems. So that will be a, uh, another good review. So we solved the first one. Do you have any questions on the first one? We solved it yesterday. Hopefully you look through this. And I've posted the midterm also online. Okay, so you can practice more. All right, so here we go. All right. Yeah. So let's review our exam problems. Oh, did it paste? OK. Find the value of IX and VAB. So Ix is what? So you can either find, so before you get started, actually, let's think about this. Um, again, remember, like I told you last, yesterday, don't think about his esoteric circuit analysis techniques. See if you can use KCL, KVL, and Ohm's law, right? So let's say, hmm, I can use KVL, right, to find VAB. Remember, KVL goes around loops, right? So if I label the nodes, A, if you want, let's call this node B, let's call this node C, let's call this node D. So actually, no, no, wait, wait, V, A, B, right? Oops, hold on, hold on, hold on. I didn't see that. So then this is A, B. Let's call this, oh, I thought that was my laptop, C, D. All right. Yeah, I wanted to leave these two nodes as A, B because remember I told you the convention, if this is V, A, B, that means this is A and that's B, okay? All right, so let's say I go around this loop. I can do that, right? I can go B, A, D, B. That's a loop, yes? The problem is, I don't know what the voltage across R2 is, yes? I can even do this loop. That's also a loop. Don't think open circuits are not part of a loop. Open circuit is just open circuit. Basically, this is asking you, if I take my voltmeter, and I stick my positive end at A and my negative end at B, what do I measure? That's what's asking you. So for the most common answer was seven volts. You can see now, hopefully, there is no way it can be seven volts. No way. Because four plus three is seven, and this AB is not across CD. You see that? So basically, what this problem is testing you is, it's testing, if you know, again, KVL, Ohm's law, and actually, that's about it. KCL, most of you got the current right, okay? But the problem is you got the sign wrong. And that's a, that's a big problem, right? But let's, again, like I said, that's what we're doing all this to fix all that. Okay. So just thinking about this problem should tell you, wait a minute, I can't find VAB directly. I need to find IX first, yes? So how would I find IX? What do I do? Yeah. Okay. 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 So that was a very good uh, suggestion. All these elements are in series, yes? So because they have the same current flowing through them. Is that clear? So just combine the 4 and the 3 into 7 and the 6 and the 1 into 7k, the 6k and 1k. This is not a problem because it doesn't have polarity. But these guys, you have to be very careful of how the 7 volts polarity is. So let's, so the solution is, let's simplify this into a 7 volts. So I'm just going to use a circular symbol. Okay, 7 volts. So that's the result of combining these two in series. Yes. Here is CD if you will, and here is your, oops, that's right, but I can't, <coughs> 7K.
all right what is the polarity on this okay before we look at the polarity where is a b in this picture is it there where are, where are nodes a b Where is it? There are nodes A, B in that picture. Huh? They're not there. Because of circuit simplification, all right, I lost nodes A, B. That's fine. So you can't find V, A, B from this. No way. Because V, A, A is the node between the 4 volts and the 3 volts. B is the node between R1 and R2. Is that clear? So you might uh, recall this from your circuit simplification, like when you find Thevenin's theorem and all that stuff. You have to be very careful of dependent sources, okay? Because let's say you simplify a circuit which contains this independent variable, then you're kind of screwed, right? If you have a dependent source, because if that variable goes away, you can't really take care of the dependent source. But just a point. All right. So AB is gone. That's fine. Now, where, where's the, what's the polarity on the 7 volts? Where's the plus and where's the minus? Plus on the bottom, minus on the top. Yes? How do you find this analytically? The answer is, well, here is VCD, right? You just apply KVL. Let's say that's VCD, yes? By definition, the voltage across those two nodes is VCD. So note KVL around this loop, DCAD, gives what? So let's say I start at D and I go around. I go up by VCD, I go up by 4, I go up by 3 to give 0. In other words, VCD is negative 7 volts or, so it's plus minus negative 7 or plus minus 7. Is that clear? That's how you actually, if you want to do it step by step, that's how you find this as 7. Or if you're very good in your head to add this as 7 and get the polarity right, go ahead and do it. Right? If you're not, this is what you do initially, step by step, right? KVL, KCL, and in this case, Ohm's law. So is this clear? Question, yes? Wait, from going from D to C? I use the physics way. So good question. How do I know this plus VCD? Well, uh, I'm going from D to C, I'm going rise in energy, right? I'm going from lower potential to higher potential. Yes? If you're not comfortable with that, um, write down the first sign you see. Or this, this is physics, okay? Physics KVL. This is engineering KVL. This is what you're probably taught. It's taught, T-A-U-G-H-T, which is fine, right? So as I go from, this is a point of lower potential, right? That's what this means, plus minus, okay? So I'm going up by VCD. I'm going up by 4 volts. I'm going up by 3 volts. I'm getting back to the same point. It's equal to 0. Yes? Or... Write down the first sign you see. Negative VCD minus 4 minus 3 equals 0. Same thing. Like VCD is still negative 7. These are good questions, right? Please ask because you really need to know this. Especially when you do like, when we get into 2016 in like a week, in a week and a half. I mean, you're going to have both amplitude and phase, okay? You, it's hard to see this. DC is easy, okay, quote unquote. So any questions on that? VCD means plus end is at C, minus end is at D. That's the convention. No, you got to follow that, right? All your, all your answers will be negative of what's in the book. Okay? Any other questions? Please ask now. Now. All right. So now we can find IX. So IX is still there. Be careful, right? So IX is what let's see there is these two are in parallel this is also seven volts like that but i x the way i have it specified in the problem enters the negative direction of the voltage drop here so it's minus ohm's law that is v over r so i x is negative one milliamp yes any questions on that
Any questions? All right. So now we have found IX. We can go back to this circuit and find VAB. So let's do KVL around this loop. Okay. So here is our KVL loop. And so KVL says, let me zoom out. I'm actually zoomed out. All right. So let's see. IX is flowing like this. Yes. So here is IX. So plus minus VR2. Okay. So let me start here and go around the loop. Actually, no. So let's start here and go around. So KVL says, I go up by 3 volts. I go up by VR2. Yes. I go up by VAB to give 0. Start here. Going around. There. Start here. Go up by 3 volts. Go up by VR2, which is the direction of the voltage drop I picked. Go up by VAB to give 0. Is that clear? I just need to find VAB. But let's do VR2 first. 3 plus VR2. So VR2 is IX times R2 with a plus sign. Because current enters the positive direction of voltage drop. So it's IX times R2 plus VAB equals 0. But IX is negative 1 milliamp. R2 is what? 6K. Plus VAB equals 0. In other words, VAB, this will give me negative 6. Plus 3 is minus 3. So it's plus 3 volts. Is that clear? All right, let me zoom out even further. 50%. There it is. So please ask if you have questions. So this question tests if you know KCL, KVL, and Ohm's law. That's all it is. All these questions, that's all they test. Because you have to know the, you have to know that well, except the last one, which is just nodal analysis. But so any questions on this? All right. So next one. Ah, dependent sources. Okay, well, let's look at this. By the way, as in your homework too, if you have looked at it, which is due next week, uh, the good news is, which I've posted on Connect, you have like, you have more problems than, well, there it is. Okay, so you have more chance to practice this, to get this correct, right? And the, all these problems are really quick ones, okay? They should take only, one. if you have enough practice, it should take only like a like couple of minutes, right? Yeah. Yes. Please do all of them, right? Like, I'm honest, if you struggle with this, then talk to me, right? Because you, after, by the middle of next week, you, I'll be honest, you should not struggle with this. So, and uh, I'll cover like, well, there are a couple of ideas here which I have to cover. I'll do that shortly. But for now, let's go back to our, our uh, I copied this. Let's go back to our exam. Go back to 100%. Paste. All right. Find the value of Vx. So, first off, again, V, this means this is Vx, okay, AB. So, you take the, your voltmeter, you stick your positive end at A, negative end at B, okay? That's all it means. So whenever you have to find voltages, you will see the common theme is I have to apply KVL, right? usually. You can do Ohm's law and all that stuff, but the general rule is we have to apply KVL, okay? Solution, need to apply Kirchhoff's voltage law, okay? All right, so let's see. So here is a loop. So let me do two ways. Okay, actually, let me keep it as black for now, the color. So here is one loop, yes? Here's a loop. Is that clear? That's a loop. 
So if I know the voltage drop across this resistor and the voltage drop obtained from this uh, dependent source, I can find Vx, yes? That's one approach. So let's do that first. And then we will also find Vx through this loop, which will be the same. All right, so KVL says, so let's assign this as VR1. I need to apply KVL. Uh, so loop BACB. So I start from here, go around like that, BACB. What is the KVL expression in terms of the voltages? What is it? VX plus VX, yes. Minus what? No, forget uh, forget Ohm's law. Just tell me in terms of KVL. Let's do it step by step. So what is it in terms of VR1? It's minus VR1, yes? And then what? Mm -hmm. Equals zero. That's it. Is that clear? All right. All right, so Vx is what we need to find. Vr1, wait a minute, this 2 milliamp current source forces the current in this loop to be 2 milliamps. So this is 2 milliamps, this is 2 milliamps. And understand, please understand that ground is just a symbol which symbolizes zero volts. Your circuit doesn't have to be connected to ground to work. It's an example, right? It's not connected to ground, your cell phone, it works, right? So ground provides a safe return path for current. And you look at grounded circuits later in electromagnetism. Right? Just don't get confused that multi-sim needs a ground to simulate your circuit because multi-sim, it's a front end to the engine SPICE. SPICE is the circuit simulation engine. And SPICE uses nodal analysis. And recall nodal analysis, you specify a ground, right? You pick a ground node, yes? That's why multi-sim needs a ground because it uses nodal analysis. All right. Your circuit doesn't have to be connected to ground to work, quote unquote. So minus Vx. Um, so let's look at o Vr1. We can find Vr1 using Ohm's law. So there's just 2 milliamps times 1k, and it's a plus sign from Ohm's law because current enters the positive direction of voltage drop. Yes? But the dependent source now, Vy is what? Can I find an expression for Vy? What is it? Let's be very careful. There's two milliamps. So what's the expression for Vy? Use Ohm's law. So what is it? Yes. So the way I write it is I say, I put a negative sign on the outside. That is, I write it like this. So negative bracket two milliamp times bracket 1K. That is saying that this negative sign is actually from the Ohm's law convention because current is entering the negative direction of voltage drop, it's leaving the positive direction. Is that clear? All right, now let's do Vx. Vx, well, let me just do it step by step. So this is minus two volts, and then what? Just be careful, right? Uh, how much is this? Plus 20 equals zero. So Vx is negative 18 volts. Yes? All right, so is this clear? Going around this loop and finding Vx. Okay? Now, what about the other loop? All right, let's see what the next problem is. Because I'm Okay, so I'll leave out the next two problems in the sense, let's take a, for now, I want to get into techniques of circuit analysis, but let me, okay. So, what I'm going to do is, let's look at this loop. Oops. Chisel. So, this guy. We can find Vx by summing around the loop as well, right? But a common mistake 
which people tend to make is they assume that the voltage across the current source is zero. That's not true. Okay. So to find Vx around this loop, you need to know what the voltage across the current source is. Okay. And to find the voltage across the current source, you have to use the full B. Well, let me label this. You have to do B KVL around BDACB. Is that clear? There's no other way you can find the voltage across the current source. You have to do the full loop. And that's intuitively why I picked this loop. Because I knew that to find the voltage across the current source, I had to do the entire thing. It's a little bit more work, but we, we can do it. So what I'll do right now is it's 3 o'clock. So there's only like basically one more part left to this lecture, which is uh, the techniques of circuit analysis. But I'll take another break. So let's do this. I'm going to... Um, Okay, let me do this. I'm going to stop here. I want you to try and do this KVL in the break if you can or later on your own. And you better get negative 18 volts. So it doesn't matter how you find Vx. It's the same value. Okay. Point number one. Let me make another... Well, I don't want to confuse you right now. So I'll stop the video right now. So we'll take like a five-minute break because I can't keep... Well, I can keep talking, but... I can see people are starting to doze off. So uh, what we'll do is after the five-minute break, we'll start techniques of circuit analysis, so nodal analysis.